Represent you in the mayor position. And Peter Bay won't speak on that stuff. And I mean, he put a he the only one requested for 2012. I remember that stuff in a in a Man, Peter man, what's up with you, man? I can't man, I can't address the people looking like they on that marijuana stuff and they ain't must pass yet. I'd be seeing that marijuana sign over on Pearson Road, I ain't Talking about free marijuana and messing up the whole game by them flint. You, you stupid junkin' people and fuck. Our next speaker is Mr. David Davenport. Mr. Davenport. Good evening, Council. Long time no see. I came before you today. Um, I had come before you a while, well, I'd sent a letter to each one of you asking you to take the funds that the emergency manager allotted you, uh, whether it was extra, raise, or whatever, to put into a fund for the seniors and the disabled, the ones that are on set income. What, something I'd like for you to understand is, is that I've been playing chess for years. And when you're dealing with a man like Darnell Early, this right here is a chess game for him. He's already thought three moves ahead of what you're talking about today. And he's throwing diversions in front of you so you won't see it. Right now, your people are leaving. I don't care whose ward it's in. That, are, that, that discussion that you two had, I kind of understand it. Bottom line is, is that once that club sets up, Insurance rates are going to go up because they don't know what's happening. All they know is the club next to the residential area. People's, people's home value will do what? Go down. So I understand what you're saying. And you've got to protect what you were elected to protect. So I'm asking you all, I've decided to go outside of Darnell Early and all of them, okay? What we have decided to do, I'm going to say a group of us, have decided to set up a water fund of our own in this city. I hope you all contribute. But we're going we're gonna to do raffles and anything else it takes if somebody brings in a disconnection notice that we're going to do our best to help them. This is what it's going to take. I understand you got a fund here and a fund there, but it's too much red tape, people. The bottom line is, is that they're putting a stranglehold on your people right now. They're forcing them out. That's why they're talking about in the Blue Ribbon Committee cutting it down to five council, three council, or whatever. It's nine. Somebody's got to go. I spoke to the mayor the other day. He told me, well, the Karagandi water, well, there's not going to raise, raise the rates when, when it comes through, when it's finished and built. I know that's a lie. But the thing was is that somebody thought I was that stupid to believe it. I'm asking you all to please help in the fund if you can, if it's nothing but a nickel, penny, or a dime. But we got to save the seniors that helped build us and got us where we are today, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. A.C. Dumas. Mr. Dumas. My name is A.C. Dumas and I reside in Flint. I guess when we were fighting for open housing, they turned on the sprinklers out there. I guess now they got the air condition on deep freeze uh, to keep the people out. But we're resilient people, and we are the people. It's the government of the people, for the people, and by the people. I just want to say that our power lies in the voting box. That's right. That's right. You can complain all you want. You can holler, scream, fuss, discuss, and cuss. But until we go to the voting booth and vote to change government, then we'll be in the same predicament we are this time next year, year after next, and so on. And I say that because that's what Martin Luther King and uh, Chavez and all of them fought for. 
they fought for people to have the right to vote because they know voting is power. Down there early, don't care nothing about what none of y'all say. I applaud you. You know, you rally, we do all those things, and, and I say yes. But he is immune to those activities. We've got to go to the polls and vote. We've got an election on August the 5th. They say, well, it's just a primary, but it's an important election because everyone that votes for Mr. Shower on the Democratic ticket, it sends a message that, wow, these people, they, come November, they're going to be out in record numbers. We need to go in record numbers in August. Don't wait until November. Start in August. Start in the school board election. Start in the county board of commissioners election. Vote, vote, vote. And I can say that because I've been down here longer than all of you sitting up here. Over 40 years have I been coming to this council meeting. Vote. I don't care what nobody thinks about me. I have my own broadcast. I tell the truth. We need to vote. I did make an endorsement for the uh, 34th district. Because when the polls came out from Lansing, this is something I made up, it had Councilman Neely in front, followed by Jeff Bean, a white gentleman who wants to represent 70% district which is black. That is nonsense. Omar Sims is a distant third place. And the rest of them, you know, they kind of at the bottom. We got rid of Woodrow Stanley. We haven't had a black mayor since. You get, get rid of that black district over there on the north end and the south end and put someone that doesn't, is not of African American, we won't have a one in there no more. Go vote. Listen to the broadcast Saturday, 9.30. Our next, speak, our next speaker is uh, Pastor Whitaker. Pastor Whitaker. I thought I'd dry, I, I would dress up this time since the SWAT manager isn't here and he's so colorful. Because uh, I, one of the things, first things I have a uh, problem with is that they're trying to sell Hasselbrink from what I gathered for one dollar. Did you know that it was broken in on Friday? And they took the flat screen TV like they did. This is the eighth break in. When I recommended that they have $9,447 in some sense that was not signed as far as the security and the cameras and then when they had cameras they had had the people, but the police never did arrest them. I have problems with that. One dollar, I can go down here and get a used shirt from Goodwill for one dollar. How do you get one dollar when you're using taxpayers' money from the government to have a building and its park? How do you sell parks? They're voted on. Everything is coming down to do whatever they want to. And this Blue Ribbon Committee, they don't get paid. Some of the ones that you know, that I know that are clergy. I don't have no problem with clergy. I know they don't do anything unless they get paid. It's a political and a religious coup. Some of them can't say anything because if they do, you have enough information on them to put them in jail. You, they have been sold out. The people have been sold out. How many times have you seen them here or any place else? That Blue Ribbon Committee is a joke. It is a joke. How in the world are you going to say you don't have any influence? I have influence if I say yes or no. Anytime you have a committee, you have influence. And what gets me, how do you get these people? Where do you get them from? You don't even see them in the community. And then you got a mayor under two administrations. You have financial managers and he went there for financial school. You going to tell me he's not in the coup? Then you turn around $85,000 for tasers, and in other states, 
those tasers have been what? They've been sued for people who've had heart conditions. You come around and they, it's interesting to me how on the news that there is a community that's going around to check those meters, the water meters. I forgot it came on yesterday. Now they're saying the meters are mixed up, well, you've got a program wrong. We know that can happen too. Our next speaker is Mr. Michael Harris. Mr. Harris. Michael Harris. He left. He left? Okay. Mr. Willister Dunn and his wife, Doretha Dunn. Mr. and Mrs. Dunn. Rick Dunn. Okay. Ms. Cheryl Ladd. Ms. Ladd. Good evening. I'm Cheryl Ladd. I've been... Um, um, I've been here for over 60 years, and I don't like to see about Flint what's happening to it. Um, especially when I got Cheryl, my pull taxes. The mic, pull the mic down oh. so everybody can hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I got my taxes, and on it, it said the garbage collecting is $162 per house. So if a landlord has more houses, they're going to be paying a lot for the garbage, which they're not getting anymore money for it either. And then I looked on public safety and the MOT debt and the sinking fund. And I was, un I was worried about our police and our firemen. And I just wanted to know where that money is. And another thing, the first thing I wanted to know is where the money came from for um, you guys' um, raises and the mayor's. That's the first thing was on it. And um, <laughs> And, and our taxes and stuff, and then, um, and especially our water bill. Mr. Davis, that was nice that you had um, a rally, you know, for our, our water bill. But what happened? What come of it? In four years, our water has doubled in price. What is it going to do in the future? Are we going to, and I have, I live on two on the boulevard. Right across the street is the Flint River. And I'm going to have to pay more money than over $100 a month for our water bill? That's so sad. And I look at our city downtown, and our downtown is wonderful. I love it. But if you go to our neighborhoods, they're bad. Where is our money? Why is that money going downtown and not to us, the people, the residents? I like to see it. And I seen on the Flint, on the bicycle trail, it was full of weeds, and the, and the trees are coming down. The people that used to wa run around it and do, use the bicycle, um, the trees are in their way. They have to duck, and the weeds were terrible. And last weekend, um, people volunteered to cut down some of the trees in the bushes. I just want to see Flint, you know, to do more for the neighborhoods and to see the Genesee County, um, um, the... Park board on this Boulevard Drive is full of weeds. You can't even get to the water pipe, the, the hydrant, because it's full of weeds. And to see all those signs around the Flint River, you can't see them because of the weeds. And then I found out today you guys hired uh, outsourced somebody to come and cut them down, which looks better, and I thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Johnny Muhammad. Mr. Muhammad. Good evening, everyone. Um, as I uh, uh, discuss my issue, I'd like to pass this around if I could as I do my presentation for my issue. And if it's, uh, about, 10, it's about 10, 11 seconds, and you're welcome to press the play button as you go around. That's, um, if you see that, you get to see that that's the water, where the main water main broke at, in the fifth ward where I live, about a block and a half, two blocks away. That water ran for a week. As it ran for a week, I was out of water. Not only was I out of water, I had to go down and dip water out of there to, uh, to flush my toilet, to get water to feed uh, the baby, my, me and my, 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 my three young children, to wash dishes. 
And at the same time, is that was on an anime top story on ABC News Flint. That the city of Flint didn't do anything about after making top story on ABC News. Then after that, I uh, the, the politician game ran on from that sucker foot called uh, known, uh, uh, Brian Nolan. Running around uh, uh, lying back and forth, not returning calls and doing all the things he's doing. Just like he did when I caught him right out of here. Tell him he, he, he's more important that as if I'm more, um, uh, as long as I'm in, in his ward, I'm just as important as anybody else. Even the club person, he, uh, God bless them, uh, maybe please their soul that he's going to a funeral to see about. But at the same time, is I go, he tell me, I call him a 1031 night and tell him when it first broke. But let me back up a little bit. That was signs of that back in the winter time that that, that man was breaking. And it got worse and worse and worse. Then it broke on July 2nd. And then from there, the Flint, whoever sponsored the money for a, a pre fireworks night, then fireworks for uh, the holiday. But you all, whoever may concern, enjoyed their holiday. I didn't. I didn't. And then at the same time, is if it was if it was if it was me paying my, uh, not paying my water bill by neglect, DHS was being there want to take my children from me. <clears throat> and then since then, that big hole is another picture in there. I don't mind showing you. And you all are welcome to see. You all are welcome to see. It's just the same. That picture is in there. That hole that's left. That a lot of people don't even know. That that's why the street is blocked off because over half the street is still blocked off where it's caved then caved in that and gave way and, it's, and instead it's stretching up the street a whole block a whole block in itself. That's no, uh, that the street is North Street and Till uh, I'm sorry at, at Gillespie already carbon. I live on Tilden and North. And I have to walk down. I had to walk down there and then I'm gonna say this last thing. Um, besides that, thank you, sir. And besides that, when it left, the, when, when I got water in there to kind of uh, do, uh, flush, flush my toilet, I left it left a stain in my toilet. I then I, I can't get no 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 result, no kind of way from from this situation. Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. Muhammad, uh, Mr. Muhammad. I, I, yes, okay. Okay, our next speaker is Mrs. Valerie Welch, Mrs. Welch. Valerie Welch, she's gone. Mr. Quincy Murphy, Mr. Murphy, Quincy Murphy. Good evening, my name is Quincy Murphy and I'm also um, a candidate for um, 34th District and um, this race has been very interesting to me and um, let me just give you guys a Bible quote, and I really don't um, too much try to get spiritual on y'all, but um, in Matthew 20, 16, it say, so the last will be first, and the first shall be last. For many are called, but few are chosen. So take that to the bank and um, cash it for those who believe that I end up, I'm leading last in the post, because whether I win or lose, I've won because I've challenged the um, other candidates to step their game up and I wasn't afraid to run for something that I believed in because I believe in the city of Flint. So it ain't rather Quincy win or lose, it's that I ran the race. Because the race is not given to the swift of the strong but to those who endure to the end. And Quincy Murphy has endured this race to the end. And I haven't went out and ran a campaign where I smeared or try to um, mess nobody name up because I think my work should speak for itself. But um, before I take my seat, I just want to um, give credit to um, St. John the Evangelistic Work Camp Group and thank the mayor for coming out. Um, recently we had a four day project where we rehab over seven homes in our neighborhood where we painted the whole houses, we did some things up in Dewey Park. I'm not here because I'm trying to um, win our election. I'm compassionate with what I do in the community. And, and this is not nothing that I do um, because I'm running for office. I've been doing this for the last three or four years. I've been working, volunteering in this community for 20 years, not getting paid, not getting a paycheck. 
What I'm saying is we is tired of all of this bickering, fussing, and fighting. We want people to come together and work together and do what we can to help the city of Flint. I'm solution driven. I ain't the type of person that come up here and try to bash somebody or, or uh, worry about what the polls is saying because the polls don't make Quincy Murphy. I make me. I ain't brought by nobody. I haven't took no endorsements and I want to apologize to the churches and some of the people who uh, have sent me letters and I'll be taking my seat within the next 30 seconds. Thank you. Um, that I didn't want to take nobody endorsement because I didn't want to be brought and I didn't want to be going to um, campaign in, in the churches uh, because of my bad experience in some of the churches on some of the people that were supporting other candidates. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mrs. Gertrude Marshall. Mrs. Marshall. How much to say? Well, first of all, my name is Gertrude Marshall. I live in the city of Flint. Um, I just I came to address Mr. Kincaid on the corner of Milton on the Milton Street in Pengully is a park called Wendate Park. I think that's your ward. Yes, it is. Okay, the last two weekends I've been taking my grandchildren there, and um, there's no garbage can there, but there are plenty of used Trojans there. I don't know if the city could do about that, but that's not a good thing for our kids to go to. You know, they can't play on the street properly. So when we go to our parks, they shouldn't, they shouldn't have to see anything like that. Then also the grass on Mohawk and Dort Highway, the same quarter where the little boy and his dog got, kid around, got killed around this time last year, that grass is right back up there. That needs to be cut down. I don't want to see history repeat itself. There's a lot of little kids in that area there's an apartment complex in that area, so, and then there's a store right there. So kids are probably going to be causing, crossing that street quite often, and then I have 12 grandchildren myself. So I don't want to see anything like that happen again, so I'm asking that that grass get cut and something be done about that part. As far as the rest of this stuff, I put that in God's hand a long time ago. But I do want to say, <laughs> you guys have a fire in y'all, and I hope this fire will just continue to rage until y'all hit y'all point. Because I see that y'all are fighting. It's been a year since I came before this committee, and <laughs> there's wonders. And I'm amazed. I'm sitting here amazed. A lot of people may not be amazed by what you guys are doing, but I know where you were a year ago. And <laughs> you're blessed. And I'm saying, keep going. I'm right behind you. I'm, I'm holding you up. All of you. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Diane Slosser. Mrs. Slosser. Thank you for giving me a chance. Is this good? Yes. Okay. My name is Diane Slosser, and I live in Flint. No. Nope. It didn't take very long. So, no, go ahead. I we're was just... hoping um, last time we were here and everyone had so much to say about the chickens, and this time I haven't heard anything as far as any movement along those lines. Um, I think that last time there was a, a thought that they could stop action for a couple of weeks maybe as far as people who were being told they had to get rid of their chickens while the, the whole thing was looked at. And I didn't know where we stood at this point. But um, I did still want to point out that I really think it's important that people are able to do things for themselves on their own level, in their own, on their own property. Um, you know, the whole, the whole economic situation here is hard. And people do need to be able to do things for themselves. As government, you guys are kind of working from the top down. It's also important that people can work from the bottom up you know, do things for themselves that can help bringing them up. And people are strong, don't have ordinances that make them uh, not do as much as they can do for themselves. So that's, how, that's where I feel chickens are and gardening is, you know, don't stop people from doing things that they can do for themselves. And that's all I really had. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
Our next speaker is Bishop Bernadelle Jefferson. Bishop Jefferson. Thank you, I'm Bishop Bernadelle Jefferson. And one thing that I wanna bring before this council that I have not heard brought before there is that ban the box. I know that they have done it in the Genesee County, took nine months to do it. I don't know if you want me to bring a written request for you to ban the box, but the only way that we're gonna make it better, one of the things that will help make it better is that we gotta give each and every one a fair chance on last Thursday, I had um, a forum on expungement, but until they can get that record of sponge, we need your help to make a difference right. in Flint and Jettison County and the state of Michigan. It has not been done in the state of Michigan, but if we do each, each area one at a time, if we begin to work on it, then we will cover our whole area. So I ask that this city council begin to work on Ben in the Box in Flint, Michigan. Thank you. Thank you. Our last speaker is Jeremy Royer. Mr. Royer. Good evening, Council, and thanks for letting me speak. Uh, first off, I live in Flint Township. However, I am a student in the city of Flint. I was born in Flint and uh, hope to have a residency in the city of Flint at some point. The only point I would like to bring out is what happened with me at the Blue Ribbon Committee meeting. It was their uh, second meeting. It was based on their budget. Um, I ended up attending the meeting late, uh, which fortunately they did let me stay through the entire presentation, which I was given, forgive me if I train wreck his name, by Mr. Moscone from Michigan State. I don't know if anybody can correct me on that one. Eric Scarsone. thank you. Scarsone. So yeah, he gave a presentation, but what was alarming about it, one, is that with all the people that are there, um, he mentioned how Social Security was gonna be insolvent in 25 years, and that's pretty much a lie. You know, when you're presenting people, you're supposed to be giving accurate information. That is just a flat out lie. That's right. The other part was that was disturbing was the fact that he was saying that how to balance the budget had to do with attacking public workers. This was also very offensive because there's more than one way to balance a budget, and by going straight to attacking workers was really alarming <sighs> because there was, no, there was no input regarding how to grow the city, uh, other tactics that you can take other than attacking workers. And then, of course, afterwards I was asked to leave. No one took my side to say, wait a minute, he can stay. I've been asked, uh, can I have the presentation so I can criticize it, so I can write about it? Nobody has gotten back with me. And so there you go. There's your blue ribbon. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that concludes our speakers for this evening. Now to the portion of council discussion. I'll start with council. Mr. Today. President, before we get to that, you know, I had requested that a report from the city attorney as it relates to Public Act 436, the right of, you know, council and the mayor to remove the emergency manager. Eric, uh, I have that written down on my agenda. I'm sorry I didn't share it with you, but I wanted us to be able to respond to the audience that was still here. Okay, I don't, then, so you're saying we'll get to the report from I'm gonna the do that emergency before, manager before, before Mr. Turn. Bay leave and the special meeting date. I'm going to, I'm going to get okay, to then that I'll, because I'll, there are residents that want to hear our, our response to their concerns. Okay, I don't have a problem responding to the residents' concerns, but I gave the residents my cell number, and I don't even like the rule where we can't respond to them when they come up. I know Mr. Whitaker, I know Johnny, Reverend Whitaker, and I have gave the lady my phone number, I gave the other lady my phone number, only the one in the green. So, believe me, under these five-minute rules, it would take me sometime five minutes to refer or respond to each resident. And so that's a setup. And so that's why I sit out there, and for people who I don't know, I give my phone number, and we can talk for a half an hour. You can't answer some of these questions in five minutes. There's never been a rule like that before until I got on this council for one. And it's just disgusting. So 
in the five minutes that I have now um, under these ridiculous rules as an elected official, we represent 10,000 or more people and they got concerns. We should meet. That's one of the problems I got with the recommendation of the Blue Ribbon Committee. The council should be able to meet until it get its work done. It ain't no set time frame. Um, right now I'm very concerned because there's a lot of confusion out here. I'm out to tell people who are concerned about water bills that this council voted on a budget that they could have reduced water bills. And the vote was seven to zero with one abstention. I said I wouldn't be a part of that mess. Some council people didn't know, in my opinion, that they were voting to increase water rates. I tried to tell them and they wouldn't listen. I heard discussion in the committee meeting where the finance director made it clear. Yeah, you could have lowered them, but you didn't. And then in a regular form of government, we can make amendments. So that's why now I'm trying to get the emergency manager out. Under 436, because he told them we couldn't amend the budget. This budget year started July the 1st. And I don't care what you say, I'm solution orientated. If he says no to amendments, I say no to him. I want the council and the mayor to vote the emergency manager out. So stick around for that discussion because I'm looking at the legal opinion now. And I ask that the mayor be here. I want to see what the council and the mayor say about voting the emergency manager out and then we're going to talk about when. Now, I'm getting ready to do a rally and a march as it relates to water rates, police, as well as jobs and economic development. And when I do that, prior to the August 5th election, it'll probably be Friday, Mr. Davis, and I'll probably con continue to participate with what you're doing on the 8th. But I bet you by Friday, Councilman Mays will be standing with some other community leaders out in front of City Hall prior to the August 5th primary. So while Mr. Dumas talking about a poll that I knew about three weeks ago, before Omar Sims was endorsed by Woodrow, before I brought or asked that um, Congressman Kiel D come before this meeting, before the Flint Journal spoke out about Woodrow, before I told that Neely voted to increase water rates. See, the poll didn't know what I know. The people don't want somebody voting to increase water rates and then acting like they didn't. So you got to take a poll next week, Mr. Dumas. So while you coming out making an endorsement in a race that I'm in and speaking publicly for Neely on something I'm running in, well, look who I am. I'm Eric Mays, and I'm telling you I'm going to release a poll, and the poll going to say that the race then tightened up. You got Omar Sims, Eric Mays, and Neely. And then the poll going to say that if the district is 85% black, that it's going to be tough for Mr. Mr. Bean. So while you up here talking about your show and the truth will make you free, well, guess what? The truth of the people that's going to come out here Friday from 12 noon to 3 o'clock in front of City Hall dealing with issues that I'm going to call it the solution orientated protest. See, I'm not just going to protest the problems. On Friday, in front of City Hall, we will have the solution orientated uh, protest. It will tell how to lower water rates. It will tell you how to put undercover police officers in the neighborhoods to clean up guns proactively. And it will also tell you that we don't want just 20 million to tear down houses, but we also want 20 million to create jobs. And it will also tell you, and I will hope you will support, six council people and the mayor voting the emergency manager out. See, it will also tell you how to get your democracy back. 
See, I'm in political leadership, Mr. Dumas, so when you come up in a front of a council that I talk about in a race that I'm in talking neely, then you might not come on Friday and judge me 30 more seconds, Mr. President, but I know politics, and I know protests, and I know demonstration, and I know democracy, so let it be known that Councilman Mays will be here from 12 noon Friday to 3 o'clock, and the demonstration and protest will be solution-orientated political leadership, and we're going to see how many show up. I bet you I don't be there by myself. And then on Sunday, Mr. Dumas, I want you to tell me what the polls say. God bless you. Because I know who put that poll out there. That was Beans people put it out there. And you bit. You bit. Now I'm going to put a poll out there. God bless you. Well, we weren't talking when you were talking. You might as well go back to your radio show. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Councilwoman Poplar. Thank you, Mr. You President. Did. I just want to clarify a couple of things, and then I'll get to my final bullet for the evening. First of all, the DDA paid for the fireworks that people saw. Some maybe didn't enjoy it, but the DDA, Downtown Development Authority, those were their fireworks through a grant from uh, Mott, of course, not the city of Flint. Second, uh, Ms. Nair Sharif was a past member of the Genesee Conservative District who took a poll on the trees, and she said that this was a four years ago when she was on it. She has now resigned, so if we need to clear that up, let's clear that up. Now, my final bullet this evening. I'm going to show you a waste of city money right here in council chambers. A waste of your tax dollars. Ms. Liz Murphy, I know you can hear me because that's probably why you got up because you knew you were going to be next. <laughs> She is the administrative assistant to Mr. Darnell Early, who is on a contract being paid 30 plus dollars an hour. She has sat over there next to Mr. Wesley, and all we did was pay for Liz Murphy to sit up there and decide she wanted to go to the bathroom. If that's not a waste of taxpayers' money, then I don't know what. If you're the administrative assistant, you should have got up and said something. Your boss should have gave you something to say. So what do you do for the city of Flint? But come up here, set up here, say nothing, get yourself a nice paycheck, go back to your perfect patty community and have a good night's rest. So maybe, Miss Murphy, if you didn't go down the back steps, which you could have done that too, then have a good evening. And Miss Poplar told you to have one. And Mr. Wesley, if you see her, love you to death, and you too, Dane, you can tell her what I said. But I think it's a waste of taxpayers' money. And Mr. Early knows she's a waste of taxpayers' money. And I don't like it when you waste the taxpayers' money. Thank you. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Councilperson Poplar. Councilman Freeman? Mr. Davis, Councilman yes. Davis? Yes, I'd like to say on the record, um, Council didn't vote on no budget to, to uh, higher water rates. We made amendments to a budget. When we say that the emergency manager tell lies and his financial director tell lies, we can't always find out when he's telling the truth. He made a statement saying that we could have lowered, uh, put a motion to lower water rates or put something in the budget, but that's a lie. We did, not make, we did not vote on that motion. We made amendments. The day that we were supposed to vote was June the 23rd. The emergency manager usurped that process, and, a lot, and he put the motion in or the budget in on his own. Council, once again, did not vote on no budget for higher water rates. 
and I'm putting that on the record. However, Council Mays put a motion to the table for City Council to go back in meeting for three hours on three days and talk about low on water rates. I second that motion. I wrote emails to Darnell early about uh, lowering the water rates in the budget and also, but my perception was misappropriation of the public safety millage. I get a letter back from somebody, I can't really divulge that who I got the letter back from because it's confidential when you get letters from some people. Uh, but however, I got a letter from somebody saying that the money is not misappropriated. But however, I stood up for the people and I never intended, nor did I ever put a budget in on hiring water rates. Now, for the question that the lady put when she came to the, t to the mic, um, the lady who was so nice and humble, I just want to make a response in my humble remark as well. Whenever you do a protest and a rally, it'll put pressure on Governor Snyder. Governor Snyder is trying to get reelected again. And one thing he does not want is somebody saying that he has uh, monopolized the, the, the economy in the city and put a burden on the backs of the residents in that city where that they cannot afford and people are being pushed out, which I call gentrification. He don't want that to be placed in his area when he's trying to get reelected. Or if he does, it's suicide to me. So a rally and a protest, it goes out in volumes when we have a multitude of people in a march or protesting about injustice. And if it goes national like Detroit, because Detroit been protesting and rallying, and they're getting a lot of, they're getting a lot of help. They also got a lot of information from the United Nations. When I do mine, and I'm going to continue to do it, I hope that it reaches CNN where that we will get the help that we need. Because if it goes to CNN, then we get the help from a national level. But the same thing about Detroit can also be implemented in Flint when we get the help that we need. Because Governor Snyder, once again, cannot afford for this to happen. That's why a reason protests and rallies are very important, because it's election time coming up. People have been protesting and rallying since the 60s and got a lot of justice done. Martin Luther King did it in his time, and if he didn't do it, we wouldn't be in the position that we are in right now. So I wanted to just make some clarity to that. Um, I understand right here, I don't, can't remember your name and I'm sorry, but that's, that's why I protest. I protest for people like yourself, because people like yourself need to have something that you can say is affordable for you and your family. I think the water bills is atrocious. They are. When a person is paying $150 and $140 a month, when once upon a time they was only paying $60 a month, it's atrocious. And general assistance only give you $174 a year, and that's it. They cannot expect you to run up and down the street and get somebody to accompany your needs. Water is a necessity. The human body is 70 to 75% water. You can go without food, but you can't go without water. And I tell you this much, if an elder died in their house for lack, for, for lack of water, which is dehydration, to me that's a crime. That's a murder. Because you cannot strip somebody away from the natural necessities of life. Your body is predominant water. You cannot go without it. So that should, should, be, that should be rectified. And if my protesters and my rally will help you, which will put the burden on the back of Governor Snyder, then this is what we're going to continue to do. And if we do it in numbers, we will get help. Believe me. Detroit set the wheel, we're getting inside. And we're going to follow that wheel. And that wheel is successful. And we just need to keep doing it and letting Governor Snyder know, not today. Thank if you. we voted him in, we'll vote him out. Thank you, Councilman Davis. Thank you, Councilman Neely. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, I do want to address a few uh, concerns that the residents had. One well, was about the chicken ordinance and review as a discussion item that will be on our next legislative agenda uh, coming up in two weeks, Ms. Brown, or is it one month? Late, the latter part of next month, please stay uh, tuned to figure out what that actual date is. I think Councilman Kincaid is going to uh, uh, say that at the end of the meeting, but we will be addressing that as a discussion item um, to make sure that we address the needs of every resident inside the city of Flint. Um, we, this body has been set, seated here for a little bit under of a year now, and this is really a, no place for politics for me as a candidate for any particular office. As I sit here in this room, I am the sixth ward city councilman, and my job is very defined 
by the role and responsibility to perform actions uh, for the residents that I serve. And so at no time will I will ever surrender to becoming less than a city councilman that rep represents the sixth ward. So any petty campaign pieces, I, won't never, I would never engage in, and I'm not saying that as an indictment toward anybody. But as a legislative chair, Janelle, I do want to add two more things onto our uh, list of our agenda for legislative. One thing I found out about the city of Flint, we got to figure out ways around uh, the system to make it affordable for residents to live here. And one thing is I find that people are struggling to pay these high water rates and these high costs of water is that we have punitive nature, a punitive process up on the poor. When your water is shut off, they charge you. $75 or $100. When your water is cut back on, they charge you another $75. How did your water get cut off? Because you never had the money to, to pay the bill. And so we add an extra additional fee as a, a punitive nature for being poor. I want to put that on um, the legislative agenda because I would like to try to draft the ordinance to uh, ban the charging of residents for a shut on and shut off. If you get your water cut on, that means you are a customer of ours. You are, a, a, you, if your water's cut on, that means you are a customer to us. And we can't sell our product to you if you are not a customer. So it shouldn't be a charge that services our customer. You're not charged when you walk into the grocery store. You only charge for what you purchase. The getting water cut back on, um, and we cut overtime out in many departments. And I'm not for sure what that fee goes toward. And so, and it's illegal for us to make a profit. So this, this penalty up on the poor for the service of water, cut on to cut off, uh, we should abolish it. The out county areas, Swartz Creek, Flushing, Davidson, Grand Blank, and all the surrounding areas that surround Flint, they charge you $25 to get cut on, and they don't charge nothing to get you cut off. So that's the difference in what, how we do business here. And we need to visit, revisit those things when we have penalties up on the poor. And that's what we're going to do in the Legislative Committee, Mr. Uh, Mr. President. We're going to look at drafting the ordinance, and then we're going to push that through to try to save residents more money. And so also, residents out there, stay encouraged. Do not get defeated by this emergency manager and what they're trying to do. They're trying to shake you out of the city of Flint. This is an attempt to shake as many residents out of the city of Flint to make it something different than what it is now. But we were here, and we built this community, and we have we should have a say in this community. And as long as I'm here, I will continue to fight for you. Thank you. Mr. President, you as a Mr. member Newman. of the Legislative Committee, I don't want to play petty politics neither, but less if Mr. Neely, who chairs that committee, don't object, let's put that $450 water deposit on there as well. Okay. At any time, right. you can make a recommendation to put anything on that agenda as a member well, of the Well, I just did. God okay, bless. Well, there you, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Council Person Galloway, do you no, have I'm anything? No, I'm good. Thank you. Council Person Van Buren, do you have anything? No, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I wasn't expecting that fast. Um, okay. What I would like to recognize, and, and I'm sorry that there's a number of people that have left, uh, but like Quincy Murphy was saying, uh, being solution driven, he has been like that since the 70s when I first knew him. And I think many of us are like that. I feel that, especially myself, sometimes it's very discouraging being in this type of position because you feel like you're not accomplishing very much. There seems to be a lot of detours and barricades in our way as we try to move forward in making things better for this community. And I like to see things happen. I like to see results. I like to see improvements. Right. And when you don't see it, it's like, what am I doing here? I hear others say, oh, you know, they could do a better job. Well, where were they at the day that we had elections? I would like to see a lot of those people up here doing more action if they feel they can do a better job. Because I think, personally, sometimes I would enjoy being out there in the committees and uh, working with many of you side by side, because then I can see my work, my participation has made, led to results. So as long as I'm here for right now, you know, I will continue to try to make that happen, because that's the only way I can feel 
that I had done a job that I was elected to do. Mrs. Marshall, when you say we are on fire, I appreciate that. It is nice to hear support or at least acknowledgement there is something going on. You know, um, I think many of us, when we leave here, we go with a sad heart. And sometimes it's not good to relax at home. Things are running through your head. And as you drive through the streets, this is not the city that we have known to love for so many years. And to see it just keep piece by piece disappearing. Uh, we want to keep this city moving forward. So as more people, please, more people need to be showing up to show support for change, for show support that we are moving forward. Even at the committee meetings, fill up that room. Come and see what we're talking about in legislative, what we're hearing from the department's head for public safety and for financing and so forth. Be informed. Don't let things go over your head where you don't know what's going on. And it comes down to voting, like Mr. Dumas mentioned. A few votes will make a difference in which direction this city goes, where this state goes, where many of our communities go. I don't know how many will use an excuse, well, I'm busy on that day, that's why I didn't go out to vote. Hey, you can go vote right now. Go down to city clerk's office during office hours and uh, vote. Get an absentee ballot. Fill it out right then. Done. You don't have to worry about it. Or get an application. Give it to some of your relatives that you know it's going to be difficult for them to go out. Every vote counts. Amen. And if you don't vote, don't say anything about Amen. what's going on because when it really counted, you did not come through. Amen. So I know they're looking probably at Flint as being one of those communities with low voter turnout. Let's make a difference and show them they don't know anything about Flint. Amen. Flint has always been able to pull itself together right. and have shown people that they think they know us, but they don't know us right. because we are going to keep this city moving forward. The uh, other thing is uh, Mrs. Jefferson mentioned um, about the uh, looking out for those that have had uh, charges in their background or whatever, ways for them to get jobs. Uh, today was like, I think, the initial kickoff for uh, Operation Fresh Start and where they're helping those that have misdemeanors to uh, make changes in their background so they can apply for jobs, so they can get a license, so they can get some assistance because we have so many that have had problems in the past, but we need to have people contributing back to our community and be a part of this community and have a community that cares for them. So again, please continue to show your support. Continue to be there when we need us, or when we need you, and let us know how we can go on the right direction. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just a couple things. Um, Ms. Marshall, I think she just left, but I wanted to be sure and let her know that um, um, I look at getting barrels. We have volunteers that pick up Wingate Park on a pretty regular basis, along with some of the uh, residents that uh, live around the park, mow the area, particularly on Milton's side where the basketball players play. And, and uh, just about every other day they go over there and they pick up the water bottles and the juice bottles and put them in black plastic bags and send them out for the waste collectors to pick up, and they pick them up at that park every day. And I will look at the uh, corner of Mohawk. We just had some buildings tore down on the corner of Mohawk and Dort Highway. Uh, it took um, a long time to get those buildings down, but finally we got those buildings tore down by the uh, insurance company that owned those, those uh, buildings. And uh, Superior Coney Island that burnt last year should be uh, cleaned up either this week or next week by the insurance company um, that had that building insured. Amen. Um, before, we, before we adjourn, we've got a couple more things. They're not on your agenda, um, but I wanted to make sure everyone knew about them. Uh, we have a referral from the attorney's office to the Councilman Mays uh, made last council meeting. <clears throat> I talked to the attorney legislative committee 
today, and he has your response, Councilman Mayor. Could I Sorry. first congratulate him for staying the whole meeting? Well, he's here because he wants to give you your report. So <laughs> well, that's um, a as, as soon as we're done with, with that, <laughs> then, then we will be... Be uh, ready for a I ain't never so, seen that from a city attorney. Councilman Mays, if, um, if it's all right if the attorney responds to your referral at this yeah, time. Yeah, this is the response to the referral that I asked for. I've read it, and I'm waiting eagerly because I wanted to know about six councilmen and the mayor and resolution voting the emergency manager out. This is for the public. And I also wanted to know the time frame and vows. Those were the two things. If some got lost in the translation, Mr. Bate, that's what I was requesting. Thank you. Mr. Bate, if you'd like to respond to that referral, I'd appreciate it. I did pre prepare a written response that was delivered to council members on Friday. Um, under uh, Public Act 436, uh, you are correct that the council can pass a resolution uh, if uh, agreed or, or jointly with the mayor uh, they can petition the governor to remove the emergency manager. The governor can act on that resolution or he can disregard it. If the governor acts on it, then uh, the city would have the option of a consent order moving into the neutral evaluation process. Uh, alternatively, uh, after an emergency manager is served for 18 months, uh, again, uh, with a two-thirds vote of the council and the mayor, uh, a resolution can be submitted to the governor whereby the governor uh, th must remove the emergency manager. Um, in the uh, uh, city would then move directly into the neutral evaluation process. Um, the, uh, uh, it is my opinion that under the statute uh, that the 18-month period is emergency manager specific, that it commences, the 18-month period commences upon the appointment of an individual emergency manager is not a cumulative, uh, cumulative added up uh, uh, by successive emergency managers. Mr. President, if I may, through you to the city attorney, my legal interpretation is different. My legal interpretation said that is not cumulative or specific to the appointment of one emergency manager. My legal interpretation says, based upon the definition section of Public Act 436, that it's not. It starts from the appointment of the emergency manager under the Act. And it's specific when you look at the definition in Section 9 under the Act. So in light of your interpretation, um, that would mean if early served 17 months, you could just appoint another one, and this could go on year after year after year after year, and you could be in perpetuity of appointments of emergency managers trying to get to 18 months. And I don't think the legislature intended that application. So I think that my interpretation is right. And so I'm going to ask on the time frame section, I'm hoping my colleagues will support me in getting an outside opinion as it relates to um, the emergency manager and the time frame. Because I can understand, Mr. Bay, you know, everybody in City Hall is working under the stress of an emergency manager. He can get rid of you, he can reduce your salaries, he can throw us out, he think, he can throw y'all out. Y'all are more vulnerable than us. So if I may, I would move for us to get an outside opinion on the time frame. Mr. Bade has given a legal opinion that the mayor and the council can vote the emergency manager out under 436. He's given two time frames, one before 18 months, and I'm not looking at that one. I'm looking at the one after 18 months. And I look at two interpretations, maybe three. I look at one that started and we reached it in February. I look at another one coming close in September. And then now the one Mr. Bay brings that I totally disagree with. So I'm asking, can we get an outside opinion on the time frame aspect that we seem to have different interpretations under Public Act 436? And I would so move that we look for an outside opinion. I'll recognize um, that as a motion. Is there support? Yeah, for the purpose of discussion, I do support that motion. It's been moved and supported for discussion. Discussion? Councilman Neely? 
Yes, I, I have looked at 436 and examined it for a, a quite a bit of time. Uh, there's nowhere in 436 that says that that time frame was specific to any one particular emergency manager. However, it says the emergency manager experience and the experience is from start to finish, whether it be one, two, three, four, five, or a hundred. I think the time frame, and, and I'm not an attorney, and so that's why I think Councilman Mays has made the recommendation to seek an other outside opinion. But however, I think a, a more appropriate and, and a, a more expedient route, because with the emergency manager controlling the finance and consuming all the power of this council body, they, he probably would not grant that um, request from this council. So I would think that we probably would seek out maybe a, our state representative and ask them to make uh, that referral to the state attorney, attorney and then having the state attorney provide that recommendation uh, as a pursuant to that state statute because I'm sure that it may come back because I can't believe that lawmakers will say that uh, this is only specific 18 months for each individual because they would continue to have this over and over and over again, this robbery of democracy under new faces and new names every 17 months. And so we would never be free of this hostile takeover of our community. So that's why I make that recommendation. And, and um, I support your motion on that, Mr. Mays. And there's nothing, there's nothing harsh. Uh, this is for Darnell Early in his ears. Uh, if you think that you're right in your stand and in your disposition of, in your interpretation of this law, there's nothing wrong with having somebody else review it to make sure that you're correct. Um, Mr. President, I've got a question. Councilman Freeman? Um, well, first is a statement. I already know what the Attorney General is going to say. Right. So, right. I mean, that's kind of a waste of time, probably. Um, second is, is Councilman Mays, you, you brought up um, three dates. The, uh, um, I think it's the April date, which is it referenced in the letter, and that um, relates to, um, to uh, Darnell Early's April 215. Right. Right. You, you mentioned February. What does that relate to? Right. That relates to an emergency manager who was appointed under Public Act 72, which was Kurtz in the definition section under 72. But then the September date references the act. The act was enacted on March of 2013. And, months from and that so, is September. yeah, because um, Kurtz was here. Right. Under, under um, you know, 72. But if you go with when he was appointed, you would get February. If you go from the I enactment follow. of the act, it would be September. I follow what you're saying. I just didn't. But I say the appointments Wait. includes um, Kurtz, Early, and, you know, all hooked together. Oh, yeah. I hear you. Because I, I, it says an appointment under Section 9. They were all under Section 9, and the definition lumps them all there together. You know. Thank you. Okay. Councilwoman Poplar. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, I, too, I support uh, outside legal looking at what we need to do here. But lest we forget, we went to the state once before, to the Attorney General, and we got nothing, and we sent a whole heap, a lot of stuff that was done wrong. So I would suggest that we find someone that is not as biased, someone that is not in the bed with Mr. Snyder rubbing toes. So I support this, but I, I don't support the state person as the person to go to. Can, can I make a suggestion, Eric? I, I, I hear and I support what you're looking for. You know, when I had real strong objections to how the city went forward in raising the water rates and I looked at the ordinances and stuff like that, I went out on my own and, you know, retained an attorney. You know, if we all feel real strongly about it collectively, um, you know, I wouldn't be opposed to looking outside for an outside attorney, not, not one that I would pick. But I think if we all pooled a little bit of our own money, I think we'd probably get more of an unbiased and a quicker response than we would be relying on the administration or the emergency manager or the attorney general or someone like that. Uh -huh. and, there are, and there are a lot of competent 
um, attorneys that are out there that we could um, choose from and get them on a small retainer and for us to pool our money, um, you know, we probably would get it done a lot quicker and probably a lot cheaper that if we did that. And I'm not opposed to, you know, contributing some of my funding, which I've given a lot of funding for this lawsuit on water, um, to get an outside opinion, an independent opinion, and, you know, collectively the nine of us, or, or if you want to include the mayor, the ten of us, um, paying for an outside attorney to give us an opinion and not relying on the emergency manager or the attorney general's office. That's just my opinion. So. If, if, if the mayor wanted to put in something, that would be fine. But I just want to vote to seek the outside lawyer because I got a couple lawyer friends that's competent and it might not even cost us some money. And they're reputable lawyers who we might can look at two or three different interpretations. So I just wanted to well, vote. Let's vote. And I thought the vote was for outside legal opinion under the circumstances. So the money issue and the opinions, I think, is two different things. And so if we get the vote, I will be talking to some lawyer friends and, you know, maybe we'll get some competent outside legal opinions. I got a lot of people who is looking at this. I think we have support for this if we can just call the vote. Well, I, I, can I just Go say ahead, one thing? Councilman Freeman, then let's vote. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to vote no against it, but it's not because I don't support what you're trying to do, and I'll tell you why. It, we can get, you know, 15 different opinions and they can say 15 different things, but the bottom line is, is that until we take action and then if they want to tell us that we can't do that or that, you know, you're going to have to go to court and until a judge makes a decision, then we can get, like I said, 15 legal opinions, but they'd mean squat until somebody makes a decision. And so, that would be the next step. You know, remember... So I would vote yes to make the decision to um, vote at maybe in September at that 18-month period. But, I mean, it, why spin our wheels it, and for the, it isn't going to mean anything. And for the purposes of discussion on this motion, Mr. Freeman, I would hope that you would reconsider because I don't want to put this off to Ms. Galloway or one day as a Councilman Davis come back and we're sitting here with six council people I fixing it. I think you have five votes for what you want tonight. Um, so I'm just a little nervous about what you're saying, but I'm encouraging you to vote in favor of it because after that, the action could come, and I'm glad to hear you supporting the action, but then I'm going to wait to see what the mayor weigh in because if the mayor don't weigh in, it's all for not anyway. I'm ready for the vote. Roll, Madam Clerk. Yes. 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 No. Okay. That concludes the business for this evening. It, it, it was it was one other piece of business we had the. Um, Wait. There's one other piece. The special meeting. That's correct. And I, you know, I don't know how you want to approach it. I was going to get with Councilman Nolden and myself and ask the emergency manager to allow us to have a special meeting. But if Mr. President, that'll be a fine approach with me. We have went on the record requesting a special meeting. Um, we're supposed to all be in cooperation here. This is a um, serious matter. Um, nobody's just playing with it. So. Let's see what will happen, whether it's a special meeting or a special meeting on a committee day. But this is something I think that I would like to see happen within well, the next 14 days. I, I think that my understanding of what the support was, Councilman Mays, was for a special meeting, not a committee meeting, but a special meeting so that we also would be able to allow the public to speak at that time. So, and, and I'm that, saying it could be on the same day as a committee meeting, but hopefully within the 14 days. Whatever you can come up with, I'm open to let's go in that route first. So if okay. that's no other business on the floor at this time, you would entertain what? Well, let me well I'm, I'm, before I do, I just want to make this point. It's my understanding that the emergency manager is out of town this week. 
So as soon as I have communication with him, I will run this by him. But I just want you to know that I, I believe that he's out of town this week. So I don't want somebody to say, well, you didn't talk to the emergency manager. And, you know, I can't talk to him. Well, I think you time. talk so, to him a little too much. I don't talk to I him. I don't talk to him a little too much. Well, so I think that's perception. Well, I part. just thought that. I said yeah, I didn't yeah. know. So. Justice, I want to make sure that um, the, the I, was, message gets, I was being sarcastic, Mr. President. I just want to make sure the message gets, gets communicated to the emergency manager that the will of this body and the will of the public that was here tonight would want this special meeting prior to him making a decision to force the issue on a November ballot. Right. That's what and, I was going to communicate right. to him. And that sure. was the intent. That's why I'm thinking within 14 days, um, it's got to be kind of quick. 12 days. 12 days. 12 days. In order to get something on the ballot for November, we would need to have it in the clerk's office by August the 12th. So therefore, you have like 12 days. Yeah. 12 days I trust you on this one, Mr. President. And um, if you get the word back, however you communicate it, maybe through Jennifer, Janelle, leave some in our box. Okay. I got, got it. Motion to adjourn would be in order. So I, I would move to adjourn. It's been moved and supported. Discussion? Roll, Madam Clerk. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. 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 Six. Six. No, you shall not hold yes. We're adjourned.